Hey everybody, how's it going? This is Darren Gidman from GuitarControl.com bringing you this video lesson. Uh, today, I um, want to do uh, a little lesson here for the beginners out there on um, on your fretting hand on how to get it into position into the right positions so when you play chords and stuff there's clarity. Um, one of the uh, big things that I hear all the time from um, new students is that, you know, my hands are small, my fingers are short, all that kind of stuff. Um, I've got little hands. I've got, you know, small hands, short fingers. Um, so if I can do this, anybody should be able to do this. You know, definitely, you know, if you're uh, one of the guys that's gifted, you know, with, you know, really long fingers, you know, you look at guys like Steve Vai, you know, he's got you know, these big old long alien fingers and, and it's obviously a huge advantage. Uh, but it it doesn't mean just because you have smaller hands doesn't mean that you can't play. Um, so uh, what, what what we're going to do here is we're just going to look at some some uh, like different chord shapes and um, you know male scale patterns and things like that that you know that you're probably working on or will be working on um, and you may be now or you know could be possibly could give you some problems and hopefully this will will help you. So uh, let's get close up and uh, take a look. So you're probably, you know, like most people, and you know, you start off, you learn these, you know, open chords, you know, G, C, all that kind of stuff. So when you go to play them, you may be having problems where, you know, like you go to play a C chord and fourth string, even though you, you know, you're fretting that note, it's muted. Third string should be open, it's muted. First, second string and then first string. So you're like not even getting all of the notes that are, um, that are in the chord. So uh, one thing that when you're playing a chord, you know, like you're playing, you know, like here I'm playing C, is that you want to be up kind of on the tips of your fingers. You know, you want to be up on up here on the, the, the tip of your finger where uh, hopefully you've got some calluses now and stuff. You don't want to be down here on the, the pad part of your finger because it's, you know, you know, it's going to be softer, more kind of fatty. So if you're using that part of your finger, you are exposing that, that um, you know, thicker part of your finger here to touch. <laughs> the next string. So like here I'm trying to play the third fret of the fifth string and the fourth string is muted. But if I come up on the tip of my finger, now it's not in the way. It's not in the way of that string. So you kind of want to be up on the tips of your fingers and you want to take your thumb and move it around to the back of the neck. Now, you, you know, if you watch me play, a lot of times my thumb is like up at the top. Uh, and that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, it's just at first you, you you're gonna you know, you kind of need the extra leverage. So if you have your thumb around the back and you think of like you're pinching the guitar, you you're gonna get a lot more leverage and it's easier to get up on the tips of those fingers. So another thing is bring your wrist around. See how my wrist is bent like this? You don't want to stick the palm of your hand against the back of the neck. You know you don't want to be like you're like making a fist. Some chords that will work. But a lot of them, it won't. It will, you know, if you're playing the C and you're trying to do that, then, you know, you're, you're muting half of the strings with your other fingers. So if you bring your thumb around the back, keep your wrist bent, and think of it as like you're out here and you're pointing back. I mean, you literally don't want to be out that far. But, you know, think of it that way as if you're pointing back. And then when you go to play the chord, when you're first working on them, is play each string separately. Play each string separately and make sure that you have the clarity. So if you're going to play and you're, you got that, oh, okay, it's my second finger is touching down there. So I'm just going to roll with my wrist out a little bit and it gives you that, that clearance to be able to, to get on there. So depending upon what chord you're playing, just like you have to put your fingers in a different position, sometimes you have to change the position your hand is in slightly too to compensate for that. So if I'm playing the C and then I go to a G, all of a sudden my arm is rotating out this way because I'm reaching over like this. But I'm still, again, I got my wrist bent and I'm up on the tips of those fingers. 
is C, back to G, C, back to G, just like that. Now, when you, uh, the one of the chords that um, I hear a lot of complaints about and stuff at first with, you know, beginner students is F. Now, not the bar chord, just the, the open, you know, version here. So what is, in case you don't know that chord, I'm barring across the first and second fret of the first two strings. Third fret, or excuse me, second fret of the third string, and then fourth fret of the fourth string. And I personally like to add this uh, low C here, so it actually is F over C, but that's how I like to do it. Now, when, if I'm barring across these two, I would try, and this finger's straight, these fingers I have a hard time if I'm if I'm bending at that first knuckle, which you know you have to do for a lot of chords to get up on that tip. It's like kind of an all or nothing thing for me. So if I'm playing this, it's hard for me to make this finger straight, but the other one's not being. And it also puts me in this really awkward, you know, uncomfortable position to play, in, you know, in order to be able to play the chord. So if when you go to do this, I put my fingers on and then I roll my arm this way. So I'm like rolling my, you know, I'm moving my elbow towards the body of the guitar. And what ends up happening is that now I'm barring on the side of my first finger instead of trying to be here on the flat part of the front. So you just roll out like that. So if I'm going from F and then back to C, I'm rolling back and forth and moving that elbow back and forth like that. Now with bar chords, uh, and bar chords, another thing, you know, beginners, you know, get, you know, can be, they can be very frustrating. So if I'm playing a bar chord, you know, like I'm playing one with, you know, root note, the sixth string root note major shape. So it looks just like the E that you probably already know, but using the second, third, and fourth finger, it's open sixth string. But in this case, okay, I'm going to do G. So I'm going to take my first finger and I'm going to bar it all the way across, you know, like a, like it's the capo, and then put my other fingers on. Now, if you try to stick your, you know, the palm of your hand up so your arms, you know, like this up here, it's really, it's really hard to get that chord. If I come around like this, I got that nice bend in my wrist thumb on the back of the neck, it gives me much, much more leverage to be able to do this and get that nice clarity. Uh, same thing if you're doing a bar chord that's rooted on the fifth string, uh, if you're playing, you know, like a major. So now playing the, uh, this is C major, so I'm playing a C here, third fret of the fifth string with my first finger, and then I'm barring across the fifth fret of the fourth, third, and second strings. See, I got my wrist bent. If I, if I try to stick my thumb up here like this and put my, you know, like I'm holding the baseball back, then you just run into, you run into problems. Same thing if I'm doing the minor. This way it allows me to get up on the tips of my fingers and put the bar in there, keep my thumb on the back of the neck and my wrist uh, bent, bent out like that. Right now, if we were going to be working with uh, stuff that's more scalar, you know, like, uh, you know, you're, you're just practicing your scales, or you're doing a lick or something like that. So if I'm playing, you know, here, I'm gonna play a, a, a B major scale. Whoops. So what I wanna do here is, again, I don't wanna try to stick the palm of my hand up here like this, because then when I go to reach that second note, my fingers don't wanna stretch apart. So I come around like this, and now all of a sudden I've got this reach. So, I'm, uh, for this B major scale, I'm seven, nine, 11 on the sixth string, seven, nine, 11 on the fifth string, uh, eight, nine, 11 on the four, eight, nine, 11 on uh, three, uh, 9, 11, 12 on 2, and 9, 11, 12 on 1. Whoops. So, keeping my thumb on the back of the neck, my wrist bent, it's very, very easy to do that. I'm up on the tips of my fingers. Same thing if I was going to play like, you know, a uh, pentatonic scale. I don't want to stick, you know, the palm of my hand up like this and be struggling trying to do that or have my thumb up here. I come around. Gives me lots of room. All right, 
So uh, one other thing that I want to add with this is, um, as you can see, I, I'm you know I'm holding the guitar. You know, usually most time you see guys and they got their guitar over here. You know, I played this way. You know, my like whole life. Um, uh, when I was in when I was taking classical guitar lessons when I was a kid. You know, they always wanted you to sit this way, and I didn't want to do that. I hated it at the time. Um, I wanted to sit the other way. Well, what I found out is uh, uh, it was kind of by a, a weird weird thing but I, I got this new chair for my studio and um, it's like an orthopedic chair you know because you know bad back and it has arms on it well you can't if you've got arms on your chair you can't sit this way so I had to start sitting this way you know so that I, I didn't have the arm of the chair in the way well after a couple of days I realized that it was so much easier to play this way that I couldn't even I couldn't even believe how much easier it was for your fretting hand to be able to get you know where you wanted to be so this is just the way I adopted this, and this is just how I sit, you know, hold the guitar when I'm sitting down. And then also, if you're using a strap, when you stand up, it's going to make the guitar about in the same place. So it just makes it so there's no sitting or standing. Everything is very, you know, almost the same. And that and that's you know, consistency is is key to with playing guitar. So I hope you got something out of this. Uh, you know, be sure to subscribe to the channel. Leave me a comment down below of like, you know, future lessons of things that you would like to see. Um, all of these, the stuff that I said here with this today, you know, I'm on an electric guitar, but you could do the same thing on an acoustic guitar. You know, it's the, you know, it's the same thing. So uh, I just happen to be using my electric guitar. So, uh, you know, leave me a comment down below and let, you know, let me know what do you, what do you prefer? What do you, do you like to practice on your electric more or do you prefer to practice on your acoustic or are you not... You know, you, you like them both the same. Uh, leave me a comment down below and uh, let me know. All right, well, until, uh, until next time.